I'm E. I'm a visual artist and arts educator. I'm pansexual and transgender, in the process of physically transitioning from male to female, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Today, I'd like to talk about some of my experiences with transitioning. February 15, 2017 is the day that I was able to accept that I'm transgender. For me, this has been a lifelong ordeal. I grew up in a conservative community in Iowa during a far less progressive time. When I was 15, my body began to change, and I couldn't hide my facial hair even if I shaved multiple times a day. I hated everything that was happening to me, and I was convinced that my body was a mistake. As I began to have feelings of attraction for girls, I was also having those same feelings for boys. And when I was a teenager, my parents passed of AIDS, and the circumstances of my life left me feeling afraid and unable to be honest with myself or others about my sexual orientation and gender identity. In 2016, I was asked out by a guy, but rather than have the typical pre-programmed response, I instantly thought he was really cute. And I began to remember that I'd felt these things before. I didn't know what it all meant, but for the first time, I wanted to figure it out. Without knowing where to begin, I reached out to one of my best friends. She helped me sort through some of my questions and introduced me to ways in which people self-identify. The term pansexual felt like a really good fit for me. Simply put, someone who's pansexual experiences feelings of attraction for members of all gender identities and gender expressions. It's about the person, not what's between their legs or how they dress. Working through years of repression and getting to know my true self has been a journey, and I've come out multiple times. The first is pansexual, and then is pansexual and gender fluid. Someone who's gender fluid typically experiences a dynamic mix of gender identities. For me, a mix of girl days and boy days turned into mostly girl days and in-between days, and then almost no boy days at all. And I began to struggle with feeling like I was transgender. January 1st, 2017, I started working with my therapist. She helped me work through questions that I wasn't used to hearing. And to sort through those, my artistic practice helped me a lot. It allowed me to use my own visual language before I had the words to express myself. This was critical for me because every question brought out new answers, which brought out more questions, repressed memories, and emotions. I felt like I was fluctuating between a formed and formless sense of identity. March 1st, 2017, I started working with my gender affirmation specialist. My vitals were taken and I was stunned. I'd lost 55 pounds and my heart rate and blood pressure returned to normal, healthy levels. March 21st, 2017, I got amazing news. My lab work to determine if I was healthy enough to begin HRT came back great and my gender affirmation specialist decided the safest way for me to begin would be on a testosterone blocker only. And if everything went well, I'd begin estrogen in a month. I was prepared for emotional changes that would help me feel more emotionally congruent with my physical self and not to expect any noticeable physical changes until I'd been on estrogen for six to 12 months. Later that day, I took my first dose of testosterone blocker. I woke up the next morning happier than ever, completely at peace, and I knew I'd done the right thing for me. But by that evening, my entire body started to ache and I knew something was going on. Over the next five days, my upper body felt like it was shrinking and my chest felt like it was expanding. My legs felt like they were contracting and my butt felt like it was growing. My facial hair and body hair growth slowed dramatically. And on day three of HRT, when I looked in the mirror, I had undeniably developed breasts. I was thrilled, but also really concerned that these changes were happening too quickly. And so I went to see my gender affirmation specialist. The look on her face when she saw me said it all. I knew I hadn't imagined these things. It was like for the first time, my head and heart wanted the same things, knew exactly what to do, and were finally given the right tools, so they just went for it. April 19th, 2017, is the day that I started taking estrogen. I didn't experience any dramatic changes this time, but whenever I feel frustrated by the pace of my physical transition, someone reminds me how much I've changed, and I know that my body is busy doing exactly what it needs to do for me. I'm only 11 months into my physical transition, and my experiences only represent one trans woman's journey. And while everyone's experiences will vary because HRT works on a genetic level, typically individuals who are transitioning from male to female at one to three months can expect to experience a decrease in libido, testicular volume, and spontaneous erections. My libido increased and stayed that way until I'd been on estrogen for a couple of months. In two weeks, I noticed fewer spontaneous erections and a decrease in testicular volume. One change that was tough for me emotionally to deal with was my decrease in sperm count. I had planned on baking sperm within the first three months in case my future partner wanted biological children. 
but that changed too quickly and I wasn't able to. I've also experienced some pretty unique changes, such as my hands and feet getting smaller, both of which were excruciating. While my hands were shrinking, it was impossible for me to paint or draw. And while walking was no fun, I'm actually really excited that my feet shrank. It was difficult for me to find cute shoes in my size, but now I don't have a problem with that. Transitioning has allowed me to feel like a real person, but it's also awkward and physically and emotionally exhausting. When I first came out, my community at school was a supportive buffer, but out in public I was facing new and uncomfortable social situations. I was constantly harassed at work. The more my body changed, the worse it got, and eventually for my own mental health, I was forced to quit my job. Just walking from place to place was unbearable at times. I received constant looks of shock and disgust in an almost never-ending barrage of horrible comments. Things got so bad that I started to look down at the sidewalk hoping that people wouldn't notice me. The whole bathroom thing has been an absolute nightmare. I've been yelled at in both restrooms more times than I can remember, and I've been physically assaulted in the men's room on more than one occasion. I'm still dealing with post-traumatic stress from that. Fortunately, Lately, I've noticed that my interactions with people are starting to change. I no longer receive the comments and the nasty looks that were almost an everyday experience. People walk right up and talk to me. When I'm out with the girls, I notice people staring at me, but not in a way that makes me feel bad like it used to. And I get asked out more now than ever before. A person's social environment is largely out of their control. And when someone who's questioning their sexual orientation or gender identity feels like they have to deny who they are, their ability to function as a human being becomes compromised. And too many times these situations end tragically in suicide. However, when someone who's questioning who they are feels safe, they're more likely to be able to maintain the levels of self-awareness that are required to stay mentally and physically healthy. I can't help but wonder if I'd have felt like it was okay to be transgender when I was younger, how much happier and healthier I could have been. I've spent over 30 years of my life pretending to be someone that I'm not. It's my sincerest hope that someday soon, no one will feel like they have to hide being outside of one of the binary gender categories. Being transgender isn't about the before and the after. It's about the human spirit and self-love. This is me a year ago, and this is me today. But what matters the most is I'm just another human being. Thank you. <laughs>